Let's let this load up. All right. How about that? All right. We're going to have to jump into this one pretty quickly here. But it looks like everything's okay. Restream. Restream is doing its thing. Good deal. What is up, everybody? You guys ready for another one? So quick? What's up, Just Ride? I'm the first one. <laughs> it looks that way. We're going to be jumping into things pretty quickly here. I've already started, um, but I had some stuff that was kind of like juggling around. Two lives in a row. Yeah, man. Hey, Matt, I finally got a tank. I'm not sure how much PSI to run it. I generally do about 65 to 80. Like anywhere in there is a pretty good range. <laughs> <gasps> hey man I literally just went live <laughs> okay or ask on stream <laughs> I said or ask on stream uh. <laughs> all right bye no worries bye <laughs> Patrick uh Patrick just called from window tinting business, but uh, we will talk later. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Yeah, so we got two, two in a row. We're getting busier. Uh, believe it or not, most days I have, well, every other, eh, let's see. So I'm at another place on Tuesdays and Fridays. Most days, other than that, I've actually had at least one car in here. But we ran into some issues where it was just like, I was either, I had like two cars in a day, I was juggling other things. Like as soon as I, like it's the same problems. As soon as I wanna go live, there's other things that start happening that I need to address that are just like, I just, just gotta work on the car. I just gotta do some stuff, but I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> so uh, there was a, uh, let's see, a fixer dude that came out for like part of the, front of the house but like I don't, I don't really know what they're talking about um he's not really sure either and just like a little piece that needs to be replaced or something but it's like a fuck ton of work to take it out so i was just like and then this car got here late and then uh this beautiful thing you guys want to see something so i pulled in this full car and then uh, notice this was on the back window, so I had to address this before we even got started. <laughs> I wanted to save it though. I usually don't have them come off so pretty. So, with everything that's going on, we're here. We're gonna get this done. We're gonna make it happen. We're gonna force a live stream. I almost didn't do it. I almost didn't do it. I was like, ah. I don't know, should I go live? Should I not go live? But we are here. I was like, no, fuck it. I made this place so we could stream. That's what we're gonna do. What's your weekly schedule like? Um, yeah, for the most part, uh, a couple days uh, at another shop and then the rest of it's here. And then the, uh, you know, between the store, media creation, uh, live streaming trying to advertise this place in some way, talking to people, and like there's just a bunch of stuff. Hey, this guy, I just noticed you got your trash bin and must have been under a rock. Congrats on the purchase. How's the situation with the city? Yes, we do have a trash can. We have two. We put one on each side. We just got them. Got them yesterday. Um, so talked about it a little bit, uh, but not a whole lot. They're pretty rad. Um, as far as the city, the city's fine. Um, they said I can do, I can't run a full business out of here, but I, I'm allowed to do work out of here. So there's like, as long as you have very mild foot traffic, um, you, you, are allowed to do some work out of your house. That's completely fine. So that's what we're doing. We're literally like, 
I am just going to be an air on the side of caution. Um, I'm going to until hopefully all this blows over, right? One full car in the garage and then just I want to turn that into as good of a show as we can possibly do. So that's what I'm aiming for. Um, they got a neighbor, they got a complaint from a neighbor though. So if that shit starts happening, we're just going to have to fucking move. I don't know. The live streams aren't going to stop. Um, but I like, as far as, I don't know, I guess we'd just have to move or something. Uh, yeah, we're renting out of here too. So it's like, <laughs> but I mean, come on, I'm tending a car out of a garage. Like, yeah, no, there's no, there's no, uh, HOA. Um, it literally just city and, uh, we're renting. So it's like, I, you know, I, I get it. I get the air on the side of caution. I get, you know, they, they would be leery about it, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, we're not doing anything we're not supposed to be doing out of here. So it's just the way that it maybe seems, I guess. I don't know. I like, it's just kind of dumb. It's not my full-time thing. So it's annoying, but uh, yeah. So like I said, we got to get started. Thank you so much for that super chat though. I really appreciate it. I got the GoPro all ready to go. Um, Haters. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Haters everywhere. But, you know, fuck the haters. We just keep doing what we're going to do. Um, and then keep on keeping on one way or another. This ain't going to stop. There's too much good here. So, all right. Let's go. Let's go. So we good? We good. All right. Good deal. Okay, so I have front doors cut out. I have, uh, we have to do back doors now. So we are doing five on the back and 20, uh, 20 on the front and then 50 on the shield. So we got, we got our day cut out for us. So we're gonna wonder where our 5% is because uh, I swore I had it. Maybe it's that box. I know I have it. It's not in my truck. Nothing. It's not this one. Shit. Guys, did I go live too soon? Is that, is that what happened here? Or is it this one? 50. Is it outside? Is it in my truck? Did I really do that? You know, because this is 20. But we got to do five. I'll check on here, but this is, should be all carbon. Carbon, 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 carbon. Miscellaneous. All right. Um, yeah, it's outside. All right. Well. <laughs> oh, he loved it. He, had, he was psyched about it. A little nervous, but definitely. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. One second. I got to run outside. I forgot, um, my dumbass forgot a, a roll of film, so we're gonna we're gonna go get that right quick. It's a chill crowd anyway, so where are my keys? Oh, oh well. You can still hear me though, so that's kind of nice. Oh man, it's so much nicer out here. It's like cool weather. I had to have a steamer on in the studio. Okay, I legitimately don't know where the fuck my five is. Uh, it should be in there. 50, did I leave it somewhere? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, 
god. Yeah, where did that geo box go? One second. Because we got... We're at 35. We got... You guys... I'll get the power. <laughs> you guys, have you ever done something exceedingly dumb? And then... And then you, you just, I, have you, Tim, tip boxes play tricks sometimes. Not my mind, right? Not my mind. Uh, the uh, box was in here the whole time. I just found it. I knew it was in here. I looked at it. I literally looked at it. I thought it said 50 because it was above the 35. <laughs> All right. So I picked up this box here, this five. Wow, this thing. It's this one. It's this one. I thought this was 50. Jesus Christ. Just that simple. I <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're gonna go, gonna catch up some time, but it's like, it's not really that big of a deal. I just, I feel behind, so I'm gonna act like I'm a little behind, if that makes sense. Oh, this, this is in the way. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my headband, but it's like, I think my hair's too long and floofy at this point. It's so much nicer outside than it is in here. But I'm tremendously uh, nervous to open up the garage. <laughs> I, I, at this point, I don't know if I'm gonna be doing front doors out of here. I think we might just stick to full cars that fit in the garage. Got in touch with Geo Shield. Oh, cool, man! They're good people over there. Um, the uh, that piece of glass is a Civic Civic hatch. I can cut uh, some stuff on it, but I mainly got it as like supplementary glass board, and also if I ever get a Civic hatch. And I also it doubles as my display board too. So I put all my shades on it. It's good to have a nice visual representation, but it's also nice to have it on a vehicle. Yeah. Two streams in two days, yeah, man. GeoShield film reps attack when you join Facebook groups? What do you mean? If people are asking about film, I know they'll They'll chime in just like everybody else will. But they haven't ever seemed to been out of line with anything. Fuck, there's people that just lurk in there literally just to post links. It's really annoying. They don't contribute. They don't do much. And then if you ask a question about a tool, they'll be like, oh, hey, come buy it from us. <laughs> Lazy. Can you buy Glass Aid and have it shipped to Poland? Yeah, I offer international shipping now. Um, it's a little expensive, but 
I, uh, whatever the rate it gives you is the rate that uh, I pay. Sometimes I end up spending more on shipping than the customer does because when I go to print out a shipping label, uh, those rates adjust depending on what package I have to throw it in. And uh, uh, for the most part, it's been like international shipping is kind of like a weird thing to handle on a website. It's much easier for the U.S. because I can just do flat rate local and then we also have first class local. International is always like gives me random rates on certain things. But which company tent do I use? We're using Geo. So this one, we are back. Sorry, we're not using gold today. I'm really upset, you know. Not every car that we do can be gold, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but we're uh, we're doing uh, Geo Shields Classic Pro on this one. It was funny too. They uh, they scheduled an appointment with me. I got them in as soon as I had available, which is today. But they also uh, called a local competitor yesterday, and that local competitor. Is uh, is my boy over at Tag, and he's uh, he's busier than I am, <laughs> so he referred them over here, and they're like, "Oh, we already have an appointment scheduled there." <laughs> so that was pretty cool, and uh, and she said too, she's like, "I was nervous coming to a house, but Tag recommended you too, so I mean, I guess you got to be okay." And then they saw the setup, and they're like, "Oh shit." So that was cool. I'm kind of digging putting these cars in sideways though. Gives me a little bit extra room and I don't have, I don't feel like I have to shift it around. We're going to get some better lights back here though. So if anybody remembers these, they have foam strips right at the bottom. This is this was one of my former favorite cars to tint. The older model, Malibu. Seals pull out of the doors um, on the sides. So I know most people don't see me ever pull seals. And I believe the bottom ones do too. But aim the cam a little bit down. Yeah, sorry. It's being annoying. It's not really like sitting on my head very well. Ugh. Something like that. I think I have to get a little bead of sweat. I was just watching one of your videos and now you're live? Yeah, man. I do it when I can. All right. So we're tinning from yesterday, which means that in all the chaos, we have misplaced absolutely everything oh no we found it good deal usually put that in a drawer so when you're trying to save a little time um, you got it like one of the things that just takes a little extra time is obviously back window prep so for this one we should do that with both the back window and the windshield. Because whenever you have to leave something sitting in there to dry, you want to make sure that you're spending your time doing something else. So don't do the doors and then prep the back window and then wait for it to dry because then you're just standing around doing nothing. I'm using black magic tint? No. <laughs> black magic was a meme. That was for a video. We use good shit out of here. We're using uh, Geo Classic Pro or Pro Classic, whatever it is, it's, it's Pro. So few things on this windshield. We have the annoying uh, antenna from an alarm system and we have a couple inspection stickers because uh, this car was purchased out of state. So 
So definitely want to give it a good once over. Because this was also tinted before, which is uh, unfortunate because that means makes my job more difficult. But we will handle it. So we got some general just gook. We got this blue here. This is on the outside. This is not on the inside. This is probably where they drew on the car when it was up for sale. And then these are those inspection stickers that we need to address. Where is that? PA. Is that Pennsylvania? The windshield has been replaced. Yes, it has. Pilkington. Mm hmm. Absolutely right. That's definitely always a good thing to note. Doesn't really change much, but always a good thing to like, just keep, keep an eye out for anything else unusual. Like the back window too was tinted before. So that means the rest of the car <laughs> was obviously tinted. Nobody just tints the back window. So we have some like leftover scraps. It's an OEM back window. Um, and then we'll see about the rest. We are charging uh, just my standard pricing uh, for the whole car. Um, plus the windshield, so that comes out to 370. So we're at 130 for the uh, windshield. We're at 240 for the sides in the back. I would just say full car, but that always gets annoying because sometimes you say full car and they assume you're talking about the windshield. But I know with most places, like you used to say like a complete, right? Just complete, complete plus windshield or whatever. But like when I started my own thing, I just always just say sides and back. Because it almost like, it does a couple things I think. One, it's, it's extra clear. I've noticed it takes a little extra thought for the person like, oh yeah, 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 yeah you're talking about the sides and back. Yep, full car, yeah, yeah. But, um, with so many people now asking about windshields, it's one of those things where I don't want to kind of gloss over those anymore. If anything, most of my uh, appointments are adding full windshields now, which is just, uh, it's just become a way of doing business. Honest, I was like super annoyed at first because I like windshields for me um, were not the most fun thing to do in the world but I've gotten better. They still take time. I put a lot of prep work into windshields versus the back window. Oh, oh, I did that. Well, that doesn't make it faster then, does it? We're gonna have to get a splitter. So I have a battery charger on this car right now because it's, it's one of those things where I wouldn't be surprised if the battery just died. Hey Matt, didn't know you were gonna stream. I was watching your gold stream. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know I didn't put any announcement or talk about it. Um, I had this scheduled and I just assumed I was gonna go live. Um, and then ran into like, uh, we had somebody coming out for the house and then just this appointment ran in late and then I had to peel this beautiful window off the back glass <laughs> before even getting started. So it's just been kind of a, kind of a cluster. 
Sitting here, pulled over on the interstate for window tint. My way to go to the dealership, work today. Oh, fuck, man. Good guys, leave an F in chat for tint conditions. That sucks. He got pulled over. Uh, new heat gun? Yes and no. It, don't get that heat gun. <laughs> I'll just say that. Don't get it. It was, uh, so I got that heat gun for an AutoZone video, and then I never used it. And I got uh, Flexilla cables to like match the floor. Um, I'm gonna get some Flexilla hose, and I was just like kind of seeing what else I could do. And then I remembered I had that extra heat gun sitting in the basement. So, you know, I knew people would recognize the trash cans. It's, it's fantastic. Yes, we do have trash cans. We have a dual bin trash can. I'm a little annoyed that they are um, the stepper ones. I, oh. <laughs> oh, that's good. I offered to have them use my meter. <laughs> Not many police would have that offer. That's so funny. <laughs> Cops around here don't carry meters, but we have like a, a blanket rule that's kind of like it's legal or it's illegal. There's not much in between. There's really nothing in between. I mean, what was that? Did your older brother have the baby yet? Yes. Yes, he did actually. They have a baby girl. Thanks for asking. Yeah, my older brother. Uh, everything went well. The baby was born at 3.30 p.m. yesterday. Uh, everybody is in good health. Everything went well. Now yeah, he's got a little one. So congratulations to them. And we're next up on the family list of uh, babies, but that's not till November. Okay, so whenever, whenever you get a car that was tinted before, always assume that whoever removed the tint uh, doesn't know what they're doing because most of the time they don't. So we have lots of little scraps and the customer was wondering about that too when they were looking at the windows. They didn't recognize that there was window tint on the back because it was so light. And to be honest, I didn't catch it either. I looked at the sides, glossed over the back, and then I pulled it in, look at the back window, and there's a license plate stuck to it. And I was just like, oh no, <laughs> it's tinted. Do I call them? What do I do? And on this one, look, here's the deal. It's about supply and demand. Normally, I would charge somebody for that. And I have plenty of times. They were here, the car was here, I have nothing else, and I guarantee you, at that point, there was nothing to be had about that back window. So I sucked it up, and I pulled that back window, and to my surprise, it actually just pulled right off. So like, <laughs> it was kind of like a blessing in disguise, right? I didn't turn it into a big deal. I took care of it for them. It was just one of those things where it's like, so you win some, you lose some. Oh no. And we, uh, we lose some tools. I'm pretty sure I was total scatterbrain yesterday. This guy, I need this guy. Oh, and my squeegee. There, we need these things. Oh yeah, this is my heat box too, in case you guys haven't seen it. So. Hmm. Always go over the window for tinted windows. Hey, we got a super sticker. Thank you. 
I don't know the name. I will check it in just a second. Did I build the heat box myself? Uh, no, this is actually a newer style heat box from uh, Tint Depot. Which is really, really good. Never can be too careful. Yep, right there. So I haven't cleaned these. <laughs> Never thought I would subscribe to a window tint channel. Thanks, man. Love your setup. I really appreciate that. Yeah, man, we try and do things a little bit differently here. Uh, been a long time. Uh, YouTube window tint creator and the best best education is on the job education so live streaming is the best way that I can facilitate that oh oh damn I'm sorry about that there's a couple. Wow. Wow. We are, see, we're like, it keeps sliding back up. It's super annoying. Ugh. I don't know what's going on with the headset today, but we need to get a haircut. <sighs> Who was that? Okay. Rodney, thank you for the dollar super chat or super sticker with the upside down face. <laughs> Very nice. And then Jamie Garnett. Uh, making sure I got them. Uh, just stopping in, uh, just stopping through to show some love uh, and support since I missed yesterday. Can't stay long on the way to a funeral. Keep up the good work, brother. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Funerals are, are never, it's rough. Um, but thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Um, really appreciate that. And uh, just popping in, saying hello, that's, that's always special. So thank you. Thank you. Should I start with carbon film uh, to practice or ceramic? No, 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 you don't wanna, I, I wouldn't ever spend that much just to start. So when you're, when you're first starting out, uh, just buy some cheaper film, it's completely fine, but you're gonna be ripping through a lot of film and carbons and ceramics are generally a little bit more difficult to shrink and install. They have some weird quirks about them. So uh, pick up a, a one and a half mil. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're usually uh, what you're gonna be using in the field. Um, pick up a one and a half mil film, uh, color stable dyed, or sorry, it doesn't need to be color stable. Just pick up a one and a half mil uh, colors, sorry, I keep saying color stable, uh, dyed film, and then start with that. It'll save you some money, you'll learn a lot, um, and to be honest, it depends on your clients, but um, for the most part, it, especially in the beginning, there's a lot to kind of handle. Um, most customers in my area, anyways, we, we end up installing uh, like a color stable film. Um, but that's not to say I don't install a fair amount of carbon too, but you want to offer all three, but you got a lot of learn, you got a lot to learn in the very beginning. So don't go, don't go overboard. No, the, the GoPro is on normal. I don't like, I haven't done anything to it. Literally just leave it on a shelf and then pick it up the next day and put it back on. It's just my hair is to this point where it's like pulling it up in the back. Maybe too much conditioner yesterday. <laughs> 
but usually, I, like, I don't, I don't know. I didn't run into any problems with it yesterday, so N didn't get adjusted. Tint Depot, Tint Depot offers an NR charcoal starter kit. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Absolutely. Also, uh, tintdepot.com slash tint stuff. I have a full list of uh, professional tool recommendations, like the full setup. Um, like all the basic tools, <laughs> they're cheap. Window tint tools to start are like very, very cheap. So you're like 200 bucks for tools where you're gonna be spending the most money on this film. Uh, what do I do with customers? Do they stay or drop off? 100% uh, drop off. I only had a couple wait on like some front doors because that was a quick in and out thing. Um, and they didn't have a ride. <laughs> we have the sunroof open, I forgot. Stay. Thank you. Um, so there were a couple that just hung out in the, uh, in the studio with me, talked to them while I was doing just the front doors. Um, because that's like, I can turn around front doors within, uh, within like half an hour. So that's not bad, but this is like the full thing with the full windshield and it's like, no, I, I can't have, they asked though if they could wait on this one and I just, I, sorry, I can't. And there's too much little things too that like, you know, I'm at home, so sometimes there's home stuff I gotta handle. Any crazy stories about window tint? Oh, not. R I'm sure there are. Nothing comes to mind right now. I've told a, I've told a handful on stream before. Um, just your regular disgruntled customers. <laughs> a lot of. A lot of like beat up cars, you know. There's lots of cars that'll come in that uh, not necessarily to hear so much, um, but if you're if you're a little bit cheaper, <laughs> like cars for for a hundred dollars, you'll see some interesting shit, and you usually have more problems for it. Yeah, I think that's how long I've been tinting. <sighs> Customers lock the doors. Um, oh, I've had that happen to me before. Oh, you mean like here? So they don't walk in or anything? Dude, nobody comes here. Not unless they have an appointment. People don't just show up. <laughs> the yesterday the Subaru Forester was full of dog hair. Oh, that's gross. I've done those before. So these Malibus in particular, these are a blessing because these just pull out. I get lots of questions every live, lots of similar questions every live stream, yeah. Yeah, see all this little, little fine crap that we gotta scrape off the window. Any one of those little bits could get underneath your film and then you're donezo. So sometimes it's good to kinda just Get them off the glass while they're there without pushing them up into a seal or something. But I'm already saving a little bit of time by not cleaning the glass before I go to cut my film. Because if I can just take one time to clean the, the window, it's the better. 
Have you ever, has the customer ever left with the keys? Yeah, actually, this one almost did. I saw the keys in their hand and I was like, oh shit, I need the, I need, I need the keys. And they're like, oh fuck. Um, and then they left a, a handbag in here and then came back. So it's like, there's always little things like that. Um, once in a while, um, like, so when you're running between a handful of different shops, uh, everybody's got their own little way of doing things. Some will pull in the cars for you, and some you pull in the cars, and some they want you to leave the keys in the car, and some they have you drop the keys off at the counter and pick up the next one. So it's like, whenever you start mixing shit like that, a lot can go wrong. So one time, on push button starts especially, uh, I had this habit of leaving uh, the key in the car. Um, but on this particular one, I had a charger. I left the key in the charger. Um, oh, no, no, I brought it into another car, did the next car, and then they picked up that next car, and I had both keys in that car, and they drove all the way to Detroit. And then a customer came to pick up their car, and then we realized we shipped their key to Detroit. That uh, surprisingly worked out very well because they were both in the same area. Um, and they brought a spare key. Wait, no, they didn't bring a spare key. Yeah, somehow they met up down there. But yeah, it was a... Like, oh, no, no, they were already in Detroit and they had to drive back to come pick up their car. So they were in Detroit um, and then they met before coming to come pick up their car. Thank God, that was like surprising how well that one worked out. I've tinted cars. There was one I remember, distinctly remember. I tinted and then came back in uh, the next day and I put on the same shorts and thank God I did because the key to the car that I worked on the night before that stayed overnight, the key was in my pocket. There's just so many little things like that. Like misplacing keys can happen very, very easily until you like work out that system. Oh, somebody asked, do I always pull out shield? Can I center it? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It, uh... It's starting to stick a little better because I'm getting sweaty. <laughs> there we go. Oh, but yeah, like I was saying, somebody used, uh, somebody asked uh, if I always pull out seals. No, but on these ones in particular, the top seals, ugh, the top seals uh, pull out really easily on this one. If they did that out of all of them, window tinting would be a breeze on every car. It wouldn't be what it is. But these are unique. These, like a handful of Saturns, it was like a GM thing for a little bit on a handful of cars. Forgot the plastic on the door panel. God! God damn it. Yeah, I did. My bad. When I'm at the glass shop, I don't, <laughs> I still don't cover panels there. It's a mostly a studio thing. Reason being is I need somewhere to pull that plastic from. I get creases on the bottom when I go to install it. Um, that would sometimes happen to me too, like little creases here. Um, it's just, yeah, if you're going like really far down, you're just creating problems for yourself. Just go a little bit below the seal and it'll just make things easier on you. Don't, you don't, don't like stress yourself out about it. Even if you match the seal, 
Um, just try that first and see what happens. Um, we need film for the back window. That's what I was doing. I should hire somebody to put the plastic on for me. <laughs> yeah, come in for like 10 minutes and put the plastic on. Yeah, I've had all the, all the problems that people are talking about in chat. Yeah, of course, I've dealt with all of them. And then you like, you develop weird habits um, where you, like all of a sudden cutting top edges suck and it wasn't that problem before. Like it's weird. Where do I get the clay bars? Um, Amazon, uh, just search glass clay bar. Or if you have a detail supplier, any glass clay bar is going to use. I'll, I have a bunch of clay bars on the way. Um, that'll be on mytintstuff.com. That's where you can buy glass aid. Uh, but as for now, just go on Amazon or whatever. They're not going to be anything extra special than anybody else's. We're not dealing with paint. Yeah, there we go. See, use that flat edge that lines up nicely there. How much should I charge somebody to tin a back glass? As much as you want. My hand's too shaky to do hand cut? Nuh-uh, mine's plenty shaky, bro. You learn to deal with the shakes. Like, I swear to God, you, you can compensate for those as you're cutting. You're just like, uh, and then you, you just kind of like, what you're doing is you're resting the blade uh, against the glass and always use that. So as your hand's wiggling, just your, your, the tip of that blade is fixed to the glass. Just takes a lot of practice. So when we cut, if we're doing something like this, right, that tip and like my hand can wiggle back and forth a little bit, but you just kind of adjust for it. So one of the first things anybody did when they were teaching me how to tint was they gave me, uh, oh, I need a new blade. That didn't even go all the way through, but we'll finish that off on the board. Uh, one of the first things somebody did was they had me just cut really fine strips over and over, uh, like a Mr. Miyagi type of deal. Yeah, we're coming to the end of our blade here. We need to change it. So we cut this out sideways. I'm saying that out loud so I don't forget. So if I happen to shrink these, I'll do it sideways again. But we got to change this blade. We need to organize this box. Was I... Was I tinting when I was in college? Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, aviation mechanic. I went to uh, aviation mechanic school, so I was going to be an AMP. But then I started making meme videos and just kept doing it. <laughs> I remember a guy at the time I was studying uh, aviation mechanics, and then he's like, you're going to be a lifelong window tenor. And I was like, fuck that. And then <laughs> here I am. He was right. But window tenor slash content creator, right? That's my outlet. That's my outlet for anything. If I can't make videos, if I can't have... Uh, if I can't be creative with it, I get bored. But you can, like, window tint's no joke. You make fantastic money just doing window tinting. 
and then you can grow a phenomenal business. That's that's one thing I, lo I love about this field, is like making content around window tinting is like everybody has an opportunity to make their own thing. It's it's like one of those few, uh, like you know I love watching tech videos, but I I don't make money on that tech that's in those videos. I spend money on it, and then a lot of times I want a purpose for it. Um, but like a faster computer is only going to get like unless you're using it for video editing or something, like you're not going to be making content around computers and stuff like that. Like it's, it's a fun hobby for the most part. And then you build one for yourself and then it's a fun hobby. But for window tinting, we all can make money doing this. We all can make an income. You can make a side hustle. Like it's very, very, uh, it's like a, a steep entry point. But once you cross that barrier, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah, Lexan's not a bad one to start with. Um, it is carbon, so you have like some inherent benefits there. Uh, you also have some inherent haze there. Uh, the thing that'll throw you off on Lexan is shrinking it on back windows, just so you know. So it doesn't get easier than a, a dyed window film. Those are the easiest films to shrink. So if you wanna make it easier on yourself, get like a dyed window film. Uh, but Lexan is, one of those films, you'll learn a lot from using it. If anything, you'll, you'll have a little bit steeper of a learning curve with shrinking it. But if you can get past that, then I'd argue you can pretty much shrink anything. So, so it's got its benefits <laughs> in the, that regard. Uh, I use GeoShield, but Geo is like, don't get Geo to practice. I don't encourage anybody to pick up GeoShield to practice. I encourage people to pick up Geo if you're serious about, um, like, you've practiced, you're getting some cars done, um, now you wanna start making some money, then you wanna start going with some, with like a brand that's a little bit more uh, reputable. But on Tint Depot, they have solid films too. And like their superior charcoal is a very, very good film. They carry good films. Um, they're just more retail focused than, uh, than dealer focused, so. Do you know what I mean? Like your customers, if you send them to Tint Depot, like, hey, what film do you use? Oh, I use film from Tint Depot. And then they go to Tint Depot and then they look at the films. Um, they, like, everything's out there for them. For, for somewhere like, uh, GeoShield, if you send your, you can send your customers there and they'll get introduced to a brand about window film. It's, it's a very distinctive difference. We're moving right along on this one. Love these Malibus. Okay, let's get a new... No, we have a razor blade. Good deal. You guys remember this type of speed over at the... Uh... Over at the glass shop. <laughs> what you usually do. I, so I'll be completely honest. I uh, I stressed myself out when I first started titting here. What happened yesterday? Uh, I don't know. Yesterday went really well. We did a gold tint. <laughs> I mean, there's just like city slash whatever issue there, but um, the stream went really well yesterday. A uh, customer loved it. Dude, that fucking car. I never smiled so much from tinning a car as I did with that one. It, was, it looked fantastic. It was super just, it's just a film that makes you smile. 
You can't put a price on that. Whoever removed these didn't do the best job, but they sure didn't leave a lot of glue everywhere, so I am thankful to them. In true seller fashion, in true seller fashion, they removed the sides, made it presentable enough for pictures. And then we, uh, I forgot what I was saying. No, come on, tuck, 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 tuck. Oh, somebody was being annoying in chat? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. It, like, I thought about it for a grand total of five seconds after the stream. I was just like, wow, that was annoying. And then I had too much other shit to do. It's funny too, because I've heard other streamers talk like that. And it's like, man, if somebody really bugged you, wouldn't that like bother you for extended period of time? No, nah, not at all. Dude, all I did, all I had to do was fucking block and chat. That's it. The end. And then we can move on. I'm honestly putting more effort into it now. Oh, I just splashed myself in a bunch of water. Only been tinning for seven months. That's long enough to do some some good stuff. What was this? What was that? That looked like a little piece. What is it? So a lot of window tinning, like people will tell you it takes at least a year or it'll take you, oh, it'll take you like five years to become a master, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's, it's your mindset and your work ethic um, defines a lot of it. If you hustle, you practice every day or um, just a lot, <laughs> you can get it uh, much quicker. So a year is like a rough benchmark for most people that put in an average amount of effort. Um, I was working, uh, I was working six days a week. Um, I felt competent in most situations after a year. Um, somebody in chat said it just took them two months. Dude, there's, there's no barrier for sure. Nice job. Like you can, like some people have just a more natural knack for it. And some people just, it, they don't catch on to it as quick and some people do. So the, those are very, very loose barriers. Most people are talking from personal experience and what they've seen. I legit been tinting my car windows every day. Hell yeah, that's it. That's that's what that's that's ninety nine percent of what you need to do. If you practice, if you have just a regular sedan, and you practice on that over and over, and you just get that sucker down. Dude, how many cars are like this? Like a bunch. So you already just uh, conquer like a, a wide scope of cars. And then even from there, they're like, you know, customer standards and, and whatever. Like, like I've said before, you're your own worst critic. So just do your damnedest with the time you have on the car that you got. Window tint is subjective. We all want the perfect tint job. We all strive for the perfect tint job, but we get as close as we can. So nice job. What is that? Oh, that's under the film. I'm about three months in, but I feel comfortable after practicing a ton. Nice, very nice. What soap solution do I use? Uh, I just usually use a baby shampoo and I squirt a bunch into a bottle, into my spray tank. T 
tinting is therapeutic until you have to tint a window three times. <laughs> yeah, it can be like easy, calm, and then but frustrating. <laughs> but yeah, right now we're using uh, Ajax. I've been told a detergent, so uh, the one, let's see, I was looking for Joy. Oh, you guys ready for this? This is a used towel. Oh, damn. <laughs> But we got to get the towels off the floor. So I got to clean up the shelves and I'll be putting them there. But we at least have a place to throw the used ones. All right, so we got those taken care of. On to the driver's door. Yeah, boy. Yeah, we should cover that up, but. How long does it take you to do a full car? Um, it depends. So here I've been taking longer in general. Um, when I'm at the glass shop, I'll be about an hour and a half. Ooh. Sorry. Coffee. Need some coffee. So I try to stay around the hour and a half mark. I'll fully admit, not tinning every day or tinting, not tinning as fast every day will slow you down. <laughs> if you just like get out of the game for a little while, you lose some momentum. So I, I usually stay about an hour and a half, um, but there's plenty of days that uh, depends on the car, um, where I'll take up to two hours and the glass shop is like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> but it depends on how busy that day is and if the customer's picking it up. So if they're like, hey man, um, just let you know, you're running a little behind. Uh, we got this, 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 and this on the schedule for you. Then it's like, oh fuck, now I gotta speed up. So then you just kind of kick things up. And then cross your fingers that nothing goes wrong. But to put the same type of quality in that type of a place versus this type of a place, like it's, it's hard, man. There's things that I'll let go uh, working in an environment like that strictly because I don't have the time. If a customer has an issue with the work though, then we make the time to fix it and then we adjust the schedule and it's like, look, these haven't been turning out right or I need some more time or you gotta understand blah, 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 blah. And then we gotta adjust because they don't wanna hear complaints from customers, but. Hey! What was that? Oh, I can read from here. Charles with the $10 super chat, bro, thank you. It says, every day uh, I'm learning something new. Thanks, man. Oh, that's awesome. Much appreciate that super chat, it's huge. I'm glad you're learning. I wanna, I need to get back into some good old fashioned videos again because you can see detail a little bit better, but honestly, this is what the world is like. This is what, when you have to tint something, this is what you're gonna deal with. So I'm glad that I can bring this to you guys. How do you feel about the dryer sheet uh, for windshields? Um, dryer sheets are great. Use, uh, don't, don't get the bottom of the barrel ones. At least I haven't had much luck. So I, I got Meyer, Meyer branded ones. Um, those ones suck. Uh, I, right now I use snuggles if I do use a dryer sheet. I have a box in my toolbox. Been using dryer sheets for a long time. Uh, been using dry shrink prep a lot more. It's, uh, it works really well. It's a little stickier, um, which is good or bad depending on uh, what you like. But I like the bag and you can just like keep it in your thing and it's supposed to be better for your hands. 
dryer sheets, it's always been like out there that like, <laughs> people don't really read the box on dryer sheets and they, you know, you use them for your clothes. But when you're doing skin contact with dryer sheets, it's like, it's just, the way that people learned how to tint, um, they just went to grocery stores and bought stuff. Like, like you see it. Um, there, there were never any window tint specific products until window tinting became an industry. Um, and then products started developing over time, more often than not, by actual window tinters. So like, company manufacturers made film and was like, here's some film, see what you can do with it. And then people figured out how to get it onto cars. They didn't start with like a installation formula or anything like that. So a lot of where window tint comes from is just cheap backyard roots and people figuring things out. So dryer sheets, they're cheap, they get the job done. Baby powder is cheap, it gets the job done. All that kind of stuff. But better solutions here and there come out. What do I think about SunTech? Um, it's a solid company. I always would gravitate more towards Lumar than SunTech, um, but they're both owned by Eastman. I've heard weird things about SunTech's, uh, just their entry level, that it scratches easy. But I, I started out with Lumar ATC, um, and I really like that film, but there's some people that'll dog that film, so I don't know. Sorry, we, oh, ooh, ew. We almost had a couple glue thingies. So glue can like, when you strip window tint, a glue can sit on those seals and then tack up against the glass. And then when you roll the glass up, you'll have like a line or like, you know, little uh, balls of booger glue. So you can like sweep that out. Hopefully we don't have any. We're running on a lot of autopilot right now. This is one of those cars that you can though. For some reason, Lexan Carbon is easier to shrink than the ceramic. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, ceramics can be, like, it's just going up the food chain. The more stuff that they add to window films, a lot of times the more difficult they are to work with. But that's not a blanket statement for every film. I've worked with, like, GeoShield's Pro Nano. That stuff shrinks so fast. Holy shit. I made a video about it. Um, but a lot of other films... Uh, they all have their interesting characteristics, for sure. The one thing, one thing to uh, keep in mind is I used to think this way when I was starting out. If a film wasn't easier to shrink or work with, I thought it meant the film was bad. Like, or, you know what I mean? Like, I just... There was like an ignorant mindset to be like, oh, this film doesn't shrink as fast, so the, the Lumar that I was using is better than it because it's easier to shrink. It's like, it's easier for the installer, and that's what we see the most. But the end result on what the customer gets, sometimes those films are absolutely worth the extra work. So, oh. hey, Rodney, uh, with the $2 super chat. You guys like this hair? Uh, this man is a walking inspiration. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks so much for the $2 super chat. That means a lot. Even the best window film is nothing if you don't master the technology. Yeah, absolutely. Every window film has its own characteristics and little things that you gotta learn. <laughs> Ah. <sighs>
Oh, I guess I could take it off the battery charger right now. I'm going to be tinning a 2007 Ford Edge. Anything difficult? Um, the back window sometimes has a spoiler. Overall, Fords um, are pretty straightforward. The bottom seals on the Edge should be fine. Usually the side seals are, are very, very easy on Fords. Um, nothing that comes to mind, but I normally don't tint the full I haven't tinted a full edge in, in quite some time. Um, I've tinted uh, usually front doors. So a lot of mid-size trucks and SUVs, they all just come in for front doors. So hopefully I'll get into tinting more full ones here. It's not that I don't ever do them. It's just like, dude, we do so many easy in and out doors. And when a cost, here's the thing, when a customer doesn't know uh, any, like they just think window tint is window tint and there's nothing more to it. Uh, there we go. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, but yeah, the, the glass shop that I was working at, they don't like, they just tint is tint and they don't educate their customers any differently. Here I try to um, make some content to have it out there so people come in asking a little bit differently and then also uh, you know get that discussion going sorry I what was that question sorry I have the question in my head I'm trying to remember how to say it um, do I how do I price rem my removals was that the question um, no worries on, on re-asking something like that. I, I do not mind uh, answering stuff over and over. If, if it becomes somewhat of a meme, um, I've, I've noticed I can just ask chat to answer it for me, and that's kind of awesome. Uh, but as far as removal pricing, that gets a little bit tricky for me. Some people charge by the hour, and I think that's kind of smart. Um, I usually give like a blanket price for a full car because I guess it's not going to take more than full up uh, two hours. Um, but like for like a full removal, I'll usually charge uh, 150 to 160. If it's like, but removals aren't that big of a deal up here in the north. They can be, but the vast majority um, of them don't come in or like we just don't get a lot of questions about removals up here people either take it upon themselves to remove it in some way shape or form or they'll call around and have somebody cheaper remove the film because if they're spending above like 150 bucks a lot of times they don't bother So, but yeah, if somebody was just getting a couple doors, like they're going to be asking for things in sets more often than not. You can, you can try and price it out per window if you want. Do I go back with a heat gun to fix issues? Yeah, a little bit of touch up. Um, but yeah, for the most part, they're done. Like there might be a little thing that I have to press out here or there. Um, but that doesn't have to be taken care of until after. Oh, did somebody just buy glass aid? Is that what happened? Was that that sound? Or is that just, what the fuck was that? What are we installing today? <laughs> Unfortunately, we're back to uh, GeoShield Classic Pro. And I don't mean that to, to dog on GeoShield, but man, there's nothing like uh, Tinning in different colors. I would love for that to be a regular thing. That would be so much fun. Do you know how cool that would be? Fucking like, hey, what color are we doing today instead of what shade? Like, oh look, another car getting black tint. What a unique thing. No, I want to do like some wild cars with some, uh, some craziness. It was the GTR sound. It's, uh, I don't know why that went off. I didn't s 
<sighs> I mean, I'm assuming somebody bought Glass Aid, but there should have been like a notification on the screen. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I think. Wait, maybe not. I know what happened. I know what happened. I know what happened. No, I don't know what happened. Because that should be on top. That should be right here. Huh. There should have been like a... A notification pop up on screen. Oh, it was a Glass Aid purchase. Hey! Okay, so that did work. I didn't see it pop up. Sorry, I'm looking. Oh, there it is! Julian! Thank you, man! <laughs> that was cool. Okay, awesome. I just wanted to make sure that worked. That's so fun. Thanks, Julian. We're going to heat up these edges a little bit. Some films you can cut and shrink exact. That's what I used to do with Lumar. That's actually how I started. And then I tried other films and they didn't work that way so much. So I gravitated towards doing this. There we go. But I have to try it with uh, Classic Pro. It's a smooth drinking film, for sure. I talked to them about the glue, too. It's not a bad glue. He said it's a thinner glue. <laughs> 